God, what a day inside that Morris County, New Jersey courtroom. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter joining us live tonight uh, to talk about it. Uh, Chanley, so this woman is shot twice by the defendant. Today she's in court testifying against him. They're in the same room. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit about her testimony. It was incredible to see. She didn't seem to hesitate at all as she recounted. She lived to tell Vinny. Uh, so she told her story to this jury today in detail what happened August 7, 2019, when she was shot twice. She also gave key context to the months leading up to that shooting, the problems, the conflicts, snowballing between her and the defendant. One thing they both can agree on, Vinny, is that they did not like each other <laughs> very much at all. But when asked why she didn't leave this farm that he owned, that she was living there, she said it was just too difficult to move all of her horses, so she wanted to stay. If she didn't leave. She also claimed that the defendant and his girlfriend were bullying her and threatening her in the months leading up to the shooting, and that on that day, Vinny, she was simply hanging out on the porch when he walked up and started shooting. But she did acknowledge some of her sort of uh, threatening social media posts that she made about the defendant. She was threatening him. So there's there, there's this, this, this difficult relationship taking place and he's supposed to be training her, right? Mm -hmm. He's an Olympian right. and, was, and training her, but yes. they just not, not getting along. And she's, what, what was she doing? What is, what is she? Um, posting about him on social media. Well, she uses the metaphor of king and queen, calling him a king, his girlfriend a queen, and she talks about them wanting wanting to slay them, Vinny, a king and a queen, and about going to war on social media. So the defense on Cross, of course, is taking her through some of these posts that sound very concerning. Let's watch. And in that same post, did you say... Can I ask what, what date you're looking at or page or something? This is July 12th. Two thousand and nineteen. And at the end of that post, did you say the king has been captured and and killed and the whole entire castle comes crumbling down? Did you say that? Probably. And that sometimes the queen must be sacrificed. Did you say that? Yes. So will you admit, with regards to this post, you were talking about capturing and killing Michael Barrison, with use of metaphors, of course, correct? I was definitely not talking about killing anyone. That would be false. How about sacrificing the queen? Was that Mary um, Haskins? On a board of chess where a piece is knocked down or moved over. Sure. Now, the defense claims that these messages perpetrated the fear in the defendant leading up to the shooting, Vinny. But she, Lauren Canterac, says that no, she was actually the one being targeted, harassed, and bullied living on the farm. She posted this to Facebook. I'm being bullied by a six foot three man. Bullied to the point I'm afraid it's very complicated. I'm not sure of what I can say here, but it seems as if safe sport was created for exactly this reason. And of course, Safe Sport Vinny is that organization that you can uh, report allegations of abuse to the Olympic organization. And she did make a complaint about him. This is this is really strange, strange stuff mm -hmm. because she's supposed to be some sort of a protege. She's supposed to be living there and, and no one's getting along and he ends up shooting her. And he's not denying that he's shooting her, right? No, he doesn't deny it. He just claims that he was mentally at a breaking point and that he was defending himself. They attacked him is what his defense is, Vinny. So, uh, All right. Wow. Fascinating dynamics inside that courtroom in my home state in New Jersey. Chanley Painter, thank you so much. Let's bring in our think tank tonight. Joining us in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Eklan Mercy. In Los Angeles, California, former federal prosecutor Nima Romani. And in Phoenix, Arizona, the attorney who represented Jody Arias and the author of the book series, which you need to read, Trapped with Miss Arias. Kirk Nurmi is with us. Uh, Nima, I think you're outnumbered tonight because uh, it looks like Eklund and Kirk have coordinated their color. It's, it's kind of a mixture between pink and salmon, but they're out to get you as the former prosecutor. Um, Eklund, what is going on here? Um, 
He's claiming he's, a, a, he's somehow a victim, he's afraid, but he's the one with the gun. And by the way, I think his gun matches your glasses because it was pink. <laughs> um, it's unfortunate, but it happens often when you have a person in a position of power. Like we have the issues with coaches or teachers or professors in which they become infatuated with their students. And sometimes if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So we have, uh, apparently we have a, a story of unrequited love um, between the coach and the student. But unfortunately, we have a coach who possibly has power, has a has the ability to make or break her career, even in the beginning, even in, in, in its infancy stage. So she's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And then just based on his, um, his characteristic, his characterization of a Facebook post that probably wasn't even talking to him or talking about him. We have we have some psychological issues. I don't know why they didn't um, file for a psychological evaluation on the defendant here, because that would be the first thing I do. And because we have a victim that's still alive, that's still able to testify, I don't even know why they went to trial with this case, to be real honest. Well, uh, Kirk, your thoughts, is there any defense here to all to all of this because it, it only one you know he's the one with the gun he is the one firing the weapon yes there's some mean posts i guess on social media that he's concerned about but uh she's also concerned and, and reporting him well look if a client says there's self-defense and you can't disprove it one you have to run with it okay i know that all too well but ultimately Vinny. You know, there's something about this case, and you mentioned the bizarre nature of this case. One of the things that I would disagree with Eklund on is, you know, she's posting threatening messages on social media, and he, the defendant, is calling the police. And to me, there's a big difference there. And when I watched her testimony, something just didn't add up. Something just didn't seem right to me. And I don't know if I could put my finger on it, whether it's her body language, whether it was the story. I'm not going to leave because of my horses. She could have came back and got those later. How did the boyfriend wind up on top of him? There were different things that just didn't add up to me. So I could see why this case would go to trial because there is so much evidence. And while the cross-examination could have been more fierce, we saw these posts and they were obviously threatening. So there's a lot more to the story, this bizarre story, as you mentioned, Benny. Well, Anima, let's, let's talk about that. As a prosecutor, are you concerned that this jury may read into this and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, they're, 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 this is really strange. There's another dynamic at play here. I don't feel like I'm getting the whole story. Um, and that could be the seeds of reasonable doubt. I am concerned, Vinny. I mean, first I'm concerned that Eklund and Kirk are teaming up behind my back. They're obviously more fashionable than me, but now they're wearing the pink and now I'm numbered in this prosecutor government issued blue. But no, I know the prosecution is concerned in this case. That's why they offered a 10 year deal on an attempted murder case. I mean, they're lucky that Lauren is alive after getting shot twice in the chest. I, there's obviously these Facebook messages you know, he's outnumbered two to one. And look, we've seen it in the last two big cases we've covered on court TV. We Reeves there in Florida, the victim was armed with nothing but a cell phone and some popcorn, obviously Rittenhouse everyone's talking about. So you never know what a jury is gonna do in a self-defense case. And those two cases were outright acquittal. So I think the defense does have some cards to play with here, Vinny. All right, we shall see. Uh, it, it continues tomorrow. Meanwhile.